Okay, so we ended the last uh, video with me telling you to keep everything in the same folder uh, all the way from your uh, original geometry files which are imported into workbench and all the way to the simulation results and stuff like that. The reason for this is so you can, when you're done with your simulation, you can zip the folder up or move it to another hard drive or back up to a DVD or something like that and when you put it back on your hard drive and uh, open up the project everything will be in, in place so you can move the folder around but if you move a single file from the folder and then try to open the project it is going to tell you a bunch of stuff that uh, you have missing files and stuff like that and then you're going to have to change the paths uh, to those files manually and you would like to avoid that so today we continue with the meshing and uh, there are several ways of doing this as uh, mentioned yesterday we are just going to create a whole fluent flow because we are going to keep with these steps we are going to share the geometry we, uh, we prepared earlier I can just uh, confirm that uh, the geometry is still the same okay so here's our geometry it's a single domain of air you can see here under parts we have only one part which is called air mm, before uh, we did a boolean operation we had two parts which was our aim at body and uh, the air domain now it's just air okay so we're going to close that and you can share the geometry by left clicking on this one and holding and just dragging the geometry when it says share a2 field you're just going to release so geometry is now shared uh, you cannot change the geometry by clicking here and going to right click edit because it's going to be blacked out because this is sharing the geometry from here so if you want to change the geometry click here and edit okay we're going to go into our meshing application which is ANSYS meshing and it's kind of a almost fully automatic mesher that can do the job fairly quickly and uh, everything you want to do you should first try in ANSYS meshing if it can't be solved here then you can move on to maybe ISM CFD or some other software for meshing okay it's attaching the geometry now and uh, the first thing here on the right you have meshing options usually uh, if you just opened a meshing file here's a mesh if you double click this and then try to open a mesh it would offer you these options for physics preference uh, since we are doing a fluent flow or a fluent case which is a fluid flow it already knows it's going to be CFD so these are kind of blacked out and you cannot select them you should leave this method as automatic and uh, this is all kind of okay and just click okay so now before we go into any advanced stuff we can just click generate or generate mesh or update it's one and the same and see what uh, ANSYS meshing is going to do by default so this is the mesh that it created by default we can click our rotation tool here left click anywhere to create the little rotational dot and it's going to rotate our model about this point okay so it obviously recognizes that there are some kind of curvatures here uh, in the legs and uh, at the front of the model you can see the mesh is kind of slightly uh, more refined here but this is a very coarse and it's just the first initial guess uh, now we're going to go through the menu of ANSYS meshing one by one so under sizing uh, this option here is advanced sizing functions so uh, obviously the pre-selected one was curvature what you would like to put here in most cases is proximity and curvature so it's going to refine the mesh based on proximity and on curvature uh, the relevant center you can play with these settings but there are three options there's coarse medium and fine and what uh, these are they are kind of uh, pre-made kind of uh, settings that uh, can generally lower all the parameters so watch this uh, if the relevant center is coarse minimum size here for um, the face was 7 point something millimeters and 713 and uh, the growth rate is 20% so if we picked medium you can see our kind of minimum sizes have dropped a bit so this would yield a finer mesh we can click update to check 
and you can see already our mesh is kind of looking a bit more decent but this is still way too coarse so another option is to go under fine now this is going to kind of lower the minimum size a bit more and stuff like that but you can also uh, influence how much uh, the relevance center is relevant by clicking here and dragging this kind of to let's say 100% and now when we click back here you can see it changed the curvature normal angle to 12 degrees and uh, so that's going to capture more geometric detail and it dropped the minimum sizes a bit more it dropped the uh, default growth rate to 10% and uh, it's added a number of cells across a gap to be 5 uh, previously it was 3 so you can see over here we have kind of uh, three elements in our gap between the road and the body. Now, if we tried to generate one more mesh, we can see the result is kind of an even more refined and a better mesh, more suited for CFD with five elements in the gap and a bit more controlled elements on the sides of our body. And you can see the default growth rate for the whole domain is now 10%, which is kind of uh, it's it's very very small so you are you're more suited to use 20% growth so what I usually like to do is leave this as default and you can leave this one as it was coerce and we're just we're just going to change all of our settings here manually so under smoothing I'm going to go and put high uh, initial seed size is basically where it is going to um, kind of try to do the mesh and if you had more uh, parts and stuff like that it would uh, be you can choose the full assembly or active or what what parts are hidden and what are not so smoothing high uh, transition a slow and fast transition I don't think they have uh, any any um, influence when we are doing the patch conforming tetrahedron mesh only if you inserted a method and chose Okay, we would choose our body and we would say uh, tetrahedrons and patch independent. This would uh, kind of uh, do the mesh in the ISM CFD algorithm for octree mesh and then the, the slow transition and the fast, transi the fast transition would differ and you can check online and in the help files how the, how the fast transition looks. But um, the slow transition is more suited to CFD because it fills the volume with elements uh, a bit more smoothly and more proficiently so uh, we would leave this as low and span angle center can be left as fine now we can just drop this to 12 but for this kind of geometry it does not have any effect because uh, it does not need uh, any any lower curvature normal angle than 18 but whatever we're going to leave this here so the number of cells across gap let's leave that as five the minimum size we can put one millimeter uh, even though it, it probably will not put one millimeter elements anywhere on the body uh, maximum phase size uh, we're going to put let's say 250 millimeters here and same here because these two kind of uh, it uh, they are set if we put them back to defaults you can see that uh, this one is kind of two times uh, larger than this one but uh, if you try to change all of these uh, manually you will see that there is no effect if they're uh, if they're put uh, put in as different values that they're going to depend on the maximum face size so just put 250 here and 250 here basically always change both of them so so they remain the same number and the growth rate can be 1.2 just fix that in it can also provide you with a minimum edge length on your body and uh, this is kind of it as far as the sizing goes so we can try to update our mesh once more I'm just going to zoom out a bit so we can see the effect on the domain okay and update okay and here is how the how the mesh looks with our settings so we can see that we still have a kind of a uh, enough cells in the um, in the gap between the road and the body and uh, the surface mesh is looking okay but these elements are still too large 
for our needs. So, but you can see it's not wasting the elements on the domain. We've limited it uh, to 250 millimeters, and this is kind of okay for the for the far field. So, what we would like to do now is uh, put in some uh, size limits on the elements for the for the surfaces of the body. So, what we can do is go to right click on mesh, insert, and sizing. And now you can size several things. You can do a body sizing, an edge sizing, and a face sizing. So, what we would like to do is let's say on our little legs here we would like to have a kind of a, a more fine mesh so we're going to limit the element size here to two millimeters okay and another thing that we're going to do is insert another sizing and let's say for all of our surfaces of the body just control hold the control key down and click all of these okay uh, we are going to limit the element size to let's say 10 millimeters. Uh, now this uh, soft behavior we're going to explain it a bit later but if you um, okay I'm just going to generate the mesh and then explain because it will be more graphic. Okay the mesh is done and we have a warning here saying the default of the featuring tolerance was larger than one computed based on size controls. What this means is you have a defeaturing option here and if your body, for example, had some uh, text extruded on, on the side of it uh, and you wanted to kind of walk over that with your mesh, if the text was, let's say, only 0.2 millimeters kind of extruded out of the body, and then you could put a defeaturing tolerance here, and let's say if the text was 0.2 millimeters, you can say 0.25. And then anything that is smaller than 0.25 millimeters, the mesh would kind of defeature it or delete it from the, from the body and from the mesh. But since we do not want to have any defeaturing here and uh, we want to not have this warning every time we click update, I'm just going to put here uh, this to off. Okay, so you can update once more. Okay, and now we can see that um, our mesh is kind of limited to 10 millimeter elements on all the surfaces uh, of the body. But since we left the behavior as soft here, okay, it just limits the maximum element size to 10, mm 10 millimeters. If you have a, low, a lower sized element, um, a smaller element here, you can see it will allow that to kind of happen and then transi transition that all the way to 10 millimeters and stop growing there. But if you change this behavior to hard, then it, it would force all the elements to be 10 millimeters, even these ones here, okay? So there would be kind of a, a rough transition from, from this phase to this phase and you don't want that. So basically keep the, keep the behavior here as soft, okay? So uh, what we would like to add now probably is an inflation layer. Uh, this is uh, so we can capture the boundary effects of the flow on our body more accurately. So it is going to extrude um, a set of prism elements from each surface of the body that we select. Uh, there are several ways of doing this and probably the easiest one is to let the program do the inflation as a program control. Okay? So you would set the automatic inflation as program controlled and then uh, you would just like to make a few named selections, okay? So let's have our face selection tool and you can click here and do a box select, okay? And then we're just going to zoom out a bit and I'm just gonna select like this. And this captured all of our body surfaces, okay? So the legs and all the surfaces of the body. And I'm going to right click and create a named selection called AMAD body which is basically our simplified car here. So we have a new tab here, named selections. And here you have an option to exclude or include the, the faces in the program control inflation. So we would put this as include, okay? And while we are at it, we're going to cr create a bit more named selections because we're going to need those later. So uh, for this face here, we are going to name our selection a velocity inlet because the fluent uh, solver will recognize this automatically and assign it a proper boundary conditions which is going to be a velocity inlet same with the rear of our domain which is going to be a pressure outlet 